join us in the faith, the Chief Apostle, Apostle William Burke Sr. I want to set some ground rules before we start. It's okay to rejoice, it's okay to praise the Lord, it's okay to cry, but most of all, we want the service to be high. Amen. We come here to praise the Lord because He taught us how to praise our way through it. Somebody in the Lord for God to call you home on Resurrection Sunday. So you want to just look at somebody and tell them once again, come on, yeah, tell once them again, once again. Yeah, once again. Altar night. Altar. Jesus is the best, man. Jesus is the best. That has happened to me. Come on, tell your neighbor, say, I don't know what about you. But I love you with all my heart. And because of that, tell you the altar night. I got a Start board of service. I am Pastor Marquelo Futrell. It's an honor to stand before you to expect the service. We honor this great man from his legacy. Amen. We honor all the clergy and respectful place, but we honor most of all his dear wife, Mother Bird. Let's put our hands together.
somebody shout glory. Glory. We're having our first musical selection by the Celebration Choir. Put your hands together for them at this time.
to a selection and said, magnify the Lord. You enlarge him. And let us, just tell somebody, that's me and you. That's me and you. Let us exalt his name together. We said about 54 minutes, you know what I'm saying? God is sitting here. Celebration Choir, that wonderful selection. Amen. We praise God at this time for the many reflections. It's my understanding that the mayor of this city, Kate Gerardo, was here during the viewing session. And I think that speaks well of the man that we're here to celebrate. Amen. And if you look at the picture, we hope you will see that he served not only here in the church, but he served over organizations within organizations, and he served his community very well. So we praise God for the mayor of this city being here earlier in the day. And let's put our hands together for him and other people here. Once again, we're going to hear from our celebration choir as they sing another selection. Say amen for them as they come.
here. Mother, why? I always say, Mother, that if you ask God why, be prepared to hear his answer. And I believe the choir sang a song any day now. The answer is, God is going to do it. Anybody in here know that God is going to do some things in your life? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know if you can't go on. Amen. That the Lord is going to do it. Anticipating it. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Because yes. God is going to do it. Dr. Spurred, Dr. Backhouse, I speak to you now that God is going to do it. Family, God. It's going to do it. Hallelujah. Good dimensions. God is going to do it. Bishop, God is going to do it. As a matter of fact, I speak about this, but it's already done. It's still somebody in song. God bless the choir and the bless the songs of the Rocky Third. Once again, let's give the choir a picture. Sir, would you please come and grace us with remarks at this time? Go ahead. Sure. Sheriff Jordan is here. Let's give the love of hand for his family. I think this is the honor of the Sheriff to take time to meet the people of the Lord. Come on, once again, put your hands together. such a loss here, but we know it's heaven's gate. I go back 20 plus years ago when Reverend Bird took me under his wing as a young kid, basically. And I didn't know anybody on the south side of town. He brought me down to the little church and got up in the pulpit and let me stand and introduced me to the congregation. Never forgot about it. When we needed a, a leader in the community, he was always there. Yes. I could call him. I could talk to him. He was just a great man. And he always, just a passion for people, a passion for his people, a passion for the community. He was a pillar. And he would, had that calm demeanor about him. But he spoke with authority. And he just emitted love in every way. And I can truly say that he <coughs> touched me in this community and so many countless lives. Amen. And that what an honor to see him get uh, the award last year at Dad's Fest. And it was so great to see the family and everyone there. And this guy right here, Adrian Taylor, is one of our chaplains for the Cape County Chaplaincy Unit. Brother Adrian, I love you, brother. He comes in and sits down and he gives me quite a perspective sometimes. Damn. <laughs> but I just want to say, I, I had no idea you all were going to call me to come up here, but it would have been something like Brother Bill would have done. And I thank you for it. And I tell you what, this man blessed me and blessed so many lives in this community. Amen. And we are very blessed to have known him. Amen. Yes. Amen. We're shouting with the good story. Right? Shouting on the good story. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for those wonderful remarks. This time, for the Minister of Reflections, and then just a few hospitals, and then we do have a speaker. The speaker will deliver the word of the Lord. I'm going to ask for this time, per the family's request, that you all can and then make your comments brief. This and the bishop will need to hear from him. We're going to call in this order Apostle Adrian Taylor, Apostle Anthony G. Green, Sr., Apostle Michael Green, 
of Pastor Kirk Donovan at this time in that order. Please limit the comments to about two to three minutes. Amen. I am uh, sanctified and I know how to pull on coattails or rolls. <laughs> I know how to take the sound in to cut the mic off. Please uh, share your remarks with the family and the so great congregation. Say amen for them in that order. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. From the God's grace be with you in the name of Jesus. I was truly honored and thankful to God to be asked to come this evening and share um, a perspective about Apostle Bird as it pertains to the future. So I say future. Future. Mother Bird, we thank God for you. To all the family, we send our love in your direction. To greater dimension, we love you. Amen. To this great community of believers that are in this region and beyond. We all love you and appreciate you. I stand now because on your memorial service packet you see an emblem there on the very front of that cover. It's actually the seal and the emblem that was designed by Apostle Bird for an organization that he established called the Coalition of Interdependent Apostles. He was truly my father. He embraced me. He saw me, as he would say, like the Maytag man, sitting over by myself, looking lonely, and he reached out to me, and he embraced me. And I didn't realize what he was doing. I don't think any of us understood it at the time. But what he was doing was he was positioning me, as well as all of us, for what God was going to do. And that's what I love about Apostle Bird is that he was never thinking about himself. He was always thinking beyond himself. And I think that the true mark of a great leader is that they're always looking for where the torch is going to go next. And so, it was a few years ago we sat in the back office, several apostles in this region, several bishops. We all sat and began to understand that the Lord wanted a gathering of the apostles and apostolic voices in this particular region to begin to unite and come together. Some of you know that we had a few gatherings and we had a great time, but as the apostle began to kind of need the rest a little, he said, let's just hold off a little bit, brethren. I don't understand this, but in his infinite wisdom, the Lord graced him to appoint me as the vice chief apostle of the Coalition of Interdependent Apostles. Amen. We recognize the apostle as the chief apostle because he is the father. How I many know you've been preaching for 50 years? You're Amen. the father. Amen. And I don't know why he would overlook great men and women of God that are in this place and say, I want you to be the vice chief. And he always answers the phone, number two, what you up to? And I would give him my report and he'd say, that's good. And I want you to know that Apostle has graduated and stepped on into glory. Amen. However, he has given us our marching orders long before he left. And we are going to bring the coalition to another phase. Calvin and I have sat down, excuse me, Apostle Bird, excuse me. Uh, you tend to forget that he is my friend, but he is the man of God chosen and selected. And we agreed that we are going to make sure that we do not let another portion of Apostle's great legacy fall to the ground. And here's what I saw by revelation. And I do pray that the man of God will grace me for a few seconds longer and hear when I read the word of God, I saw that Elijah had went up to heaven and a mantle had fallen to the ground. But the Spirit of the Lord helped me to understand that no mantle has fallen to the ground in this situation. For the apostle firmly placed the mantle exactly where he wanted it to go. Amen. And all of us are here today, we know exactly what it is that we need to be doing because the apostle had been speaking it to us long before he left this place. Some of us denied it. Some of us said it's not time. Some of us rejected it. But we all know what mantle has been placed on our shoulders. Yes. And I'm standing today, and I know you're standing with me, to say that we are going to carry on this great legacy. Yes. Can you imagine how far-reaching this will go if every one of us takes our place yes. in moving forward the purpose that God has given to us? 
Just do a favor, do me a favor, just lean over to the person next to you and say, I'm going to take my place. Yeah. Take my place. And look at the back and say, I'm going to do my part too. I'm going to do my yeah. part too. Father, we just thank you in Jesus' name for the life of Dr. William Hurst and the great chief apostle of this region, the father of this environment. Yes. We ask now, Lord, that you would let your grace and mercy be upon all of us as we mourn him. And we are thankful for having been uplifted and strengthened by his life and by his legacy. We commit to you to carry on that great journey of faith. Yes. We give you praise for it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Can we all put our hands Amen. together and honor Dr. Luke? Come on, come on, give a round of hand and praise. Oh, you can be better than me. I said, give a round of praise. Now, touch your name and say, Amen. It's not over. It's not over. It's just begun. It has just begun. We honor God today. He has our life, and He is the ruler of the cosmos and His infinite existence as He transcends all space and time. I honor Mother Bird. Amen. Give it up for Mother Bird. My mother's friend. Amen. Listen, William Tiger Bird, Kyle and Rodney, and last but not least, Bishop Calvin Bird. In everyone in their respective places. This man is near and dear to me. My first impressions were when my father, Bishop Green, who fellowship with him for years, invited me to the church over 20 plus years ago. At the time, I was a young lad. Tiger was a football star. Calvin was a master wrestler. With him. <laughs> and this tall, statuesque man with a square face, with broad shoulders, and with quite a stride came into the auditorium. When they passed him the mic, he sung a song that left an indelible, inimitable impression on me that I can't forget is stuck in the auditorium loop in my mind. Look and see. What the Lord has done for me. Has done. Yes. And I tell you, he did a William Bird esque version of the song. <laughs> Tore the house in pieces and then preached like he was going crazy. I never ever forgot that. And it wasn't until years later, talking to my uncles and then eventually. Apostle Bird, that he helped me realize that he had a spiritual connection to the Green family. My grandfather, the late Pastor Charlie Green Sr., was his pastor. He assisted my grandfather, carried his briefcase, periodically traveled with him. Both he and Mother Bird wanted me to know the connection. And so as I was contemplating and reflecting, because this is a hard challenging moment for me. He was the one who helped organize my apostolic consecration and confirmation. It was here at this church. He preached the message and he was one of the ones who laid hands on me. I tried to compare him to somebody else that I already knew. Whenever you start thinking about character, the first place you start is with the name because the name is definitive of who the person is. And so then I realized that William is a derivative of a Germanic word, will a hell. Two elements, will, which literally means will, and hell, which comes from the word hell. It is translated as a strong-willed protector. All right. The English define it as a strong-willed protector who's a warrior. All right. Doesn't that sound like him? Then I realized in his name, he was a William Bird, but I looked around nature and the owl can turn his neck 360 degrees. That didn't fit him. I looked at the hawk who has telescopic vision, who can swoop down on his plate from miles away. And uh, that did not fit you him. Better go ahead, I recognized he wasn't a peacock because he never strutted his stuff, although he had stuff to strut. I recognized he wasn't a cardinal. I knew he wasn't a blue jay. I knew he wasn't a cockatoo. I recognized he wasn't a parrot. Uh, 
I had to reach into the mythos, the mythological world, to find a word that would match him. The word mythos is a derivative of the modern day word myth. It literally means to explain the etiology of the origin of something. And so as I reached into the mythos, I could only find one bird that would be definitive on, and as to who this man really was. And it was the phoenix. One day the phoenix is flying through the air and the god of the sun looked down and admired his red and gold feathers and granted him immortality. In the granting of immortality, because there was a sheen and a glow to his feathers, all of the people around him wanted a piece of him. And so he had to leave the dwelling place of humanity and go into the desert. As he went into the desert, he was embraced by the animals and the other creatures. They didn't want a piece of him, they just enjoyed the immortality that he possessed. And so as he began to get old and as he began to get weak, he began to talk to the God of the Son about renewing his youth and renewing his strength. He said the first time he spoke, the God of the Son didn't say anything to him. And so then he found himself going back to the place that he started. He crafted from elements an egg. He took it back to the nest where uh -huh. and nested it in the egg. Somebody shout the fingers. The fingers. All of a sudden he prayed the same prayer. I need you to give me strength. I I need you to renew my strength. I need you to renew my youth. And they said the God of the sun heard him, shone his light down upon him. His feathers began to glow and shine in a great conflagration of brilliance. He literally turned into fire, living fire. But what? Before he turned into living fire, he had laid that egg. Somebody shot that egg. That egg. Look at your neighbor and said, if you look around the room, you'll see a lot of eggs. the sky and never be seen again. He turned into fire. He left bits and pieces of ash and in the wake of his ash the egg produced another phoenix. So as one phoenix is leaving the earth, another phoenix is coming into the world. Yeah. 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 Last time he says, I take my seats talking about this mythological bird of there is no parallel that I can mention with the humanity or in the animal kingdom. I have to leave this with you. Yesterday I got a new cell phone. I had to replace my old cell phone with a new cell phone. So I had to call the company that is responsible for my signal, which is really responsible for the, the inner workings, the ability to make phone calls. The new smartphones, you can use Wi-Fi without a signal, but you can't call nobody unless you use the Wi-Fi. How many of y'all know everybody is not always around Wi-Fi. <laughs> Look at your neighbor and say, you need a real signal. Yeah, real signal. And so I, I, I'm on the phone, I'm transferring my, my, my number into the new SIM card. My, my niece had just texted me and said, Uncle, I love you with hearts. By the time I tried to text her back in the midst of the transfer, it said, error, message not sent. I immediately looked at my old, old phone and it said, no service. I immediately looked at my new phone and it said, home. Y'all didn't catch that. He literally, to be absent from the body is to be what? Present with the Lord. He talks about resurrection bodies in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Soul and weakness, raised in glory and power. One phone had to give up the signal for the new, better, shinier phone. For all of the teachers to now call home. This is a shell. The signal is no longer there. But if you can see William Byrd right now, standing over the power of the kitchen, he don't have to worry about heart problems. He don't have to worry about sickness.
Dieu va naître une année et demie. Amen. 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 Grateful to be here today. Amen. To Mother Bird and to the whole Bird family. I just want you all to know uh, that I'm here for you. And if there's anything that you need, I told your daughter that the other day. Just please call me. Don't hesitate. You know, sometimes people tell you to call and they don't mean it. But I mean, if there's anything that I can do, just call. Amen. And we just thank God for this great man, God, Bishop Earth, a pillar in the community. He not only was a pillar in Cape, Toronto, but he was also a pillar throughout the state in Antwerp. He touched the lives of so many people. And he certainly touched my life. Uh, he was the one that did my inauguration and installed me as a bishop. And when I was thinking about who I wanted to do in service, I thought about the connection, as my nephew said, that he had with my father. And um, and let me tell you something, that was a special day, and it was a special service, and we certainly enjoyed him. And we're going to miss him. We're going to miss Bishop Burke because uh, he didn't say much, and I noticed that. I was in a few meetings with him, and I noticed that he didn't say much in the meeting at all. But after the meeting, then he had a whole lot to say. And you know, he told me, he said, you know, green, green. He said, you know, sometimes it's just better to listen. And, uh, and I learned something from that. Because sometimes when you get to talking too much, you may talk out. But if you learn to listen, then you can learn something. And y'all listen to me. And so we, we, you know, I realized the wisdom that he had. And I appreciate the wisdom that he had. And so I tell you, we're going to miss him. And I was just getting ready, Mother Bird, to call him. He was on my mind for several weeks. And I was getting ready to call him to do a free anniversary for us. And I did not know he was that sick. And then I got the news that he was gone. And so, you know, that's, that's a lesson learned. Because your life is like a vapor. It's here today, it's gone tomorrow. And so, what we need to do is, you know, we need to learn how to talk to people and communicate with people regularly. Sometimes we don't call each other for a whole year. Hello, somebody. So if we learn anything from this death today, learn how to Get on the phone and call the person that you're thinking about. Yeah. Call the person that you love because you can you assuming that they'll be with you always. That's right. But your life is not in your hand. Hello, somebody. Yeah. And so you treasure the people that's with you each and every day. Learn how to love them. Yes. Show them your love. Give them their flowers while they're living. Hello, somebody. Amen. And so we know that Bishop Bird deserved many flowers today. Uh, he touched so many lives. And, I, and I, I, you know, words just cannot describe how I feel right now and the loss uh, that I feel uh, with this great man of God not being with us anymore. So we will be praying for the family. You all be praying for us. And anything again that we can do for you. Uh, we'll be there for you. And you all just pray for us. God bless you.
great occasion. I want to say, um, first of all, uh, to the family, we are here for you. We love you. We're so proud to have been a part of this ministry. I'm not a great uh, orator, but let me just say from the heart, I love the bishop. He, um, first time I met him, he said to me, he said that the Lord has his hands on you. And uh, that meant a whole lot to me, coming from such a great man of God. And then he allowed me to be under him for eight years. And then he installed me into my own position. And um, I only have one regret, and that is that I didn't take full advantage of being in his presence and soaking up the wisdom that he had. He was such an awesome man in the Word and so full of wisdom. I was thinking on the way down here as I take my seat, why? It was so hard for me to understand how could he be gone? And I was wondering in my little crazy mind, why would Pastor Bird be gone at this time? And uh, in my crazy thinking, um, I came up with this thought, that so many regular folk have made it into heaven that every now and then God likes to balance things out. And <laughs> <laughs> get somebody with that kind of wisdom in his presence uh -huh. to help him deal with the rest of us. <laughs> Whether it's just supporting someone or you had an 
direct relationship with him. Remember the things that he instilled in us. Great leader always need a succession plan. So yes. before I call for the choir, I just want to say to the Tiger Pastor, yes, sir. we're here with you, sir. Amen, amen. But before we talk about anything else, before we talk about the next place here. So, as I told you once before, we are here. Amen. Just looking at you, it's kind of almost scary because we, we see him and me. Feel your shoes. His shoes were where he is. You feel yours. And after we leave and go to our churches on Sunday, have the experience of taking over the church from a pastor. We have a brother here that has taken his pastor, his pastor and father's church. But he is a sign, we are a sign that, sir, you can make it.
practically begging mama to let him play football. And he said, Mama, what if it's my gift? <laughs> you know, we had to get spiritual sometimes. <laughs> and it turned out to be his gift. I, on the other hand, took another road because I got tired of being Bill's brother. <laughs> right. And not Calvin. And I started a career in wrestling. Not the WWF. <laughs> right. Brother Wolfville fault. He said, man, I just couldn't see them folks jump off the top ring and bounce on me. I said, no, Brother Wolfville, it ain't that kind of wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> I remember this one story. I was in a championship match and I had dislocated my knee while wrestling. And all of them people was in the stands and they was hollering my name. I was going for the championship, but my knee was out of joint. And uh, I was on the mat crying and all of them thousands of people, my father came from somewhere and had walked all the way to the end of the mat and looked at me. And I hit my knee and it popped back in place. He looked at me and said, gone and win. <laughs> And I did. Oh, yeah. When I got finished, he showed up at the school the next day and wanted to know why the coach allowed me to wrestle. <laughs> Being injured. <laughs> oh, man, really? I thank God for my brother, my oldest brother. I thank God for all of my siblings. Amen. Thank God for my brother, Pastor Tiger. Allow me this opportunity to speak to them. The other night when my father passed, we met over at my mother's house. And we were still in shop, and we started operating off of reflexes in what we know. And that night, my mother turned the family over to his hands. And said, son, now we submit to you. Amen. The family direction is in your hands. So I want you all to help me pray for my big brother. Amen. He his plan. I have a strong mom. Yeah. My mother said that she prayed. She asked the Lord. She said, Lord. What I'm going to do now. She said the Lord spoke to her. And said you shall live. Yeah. And so. We all going to live. We all going to make it. It's going to be all right. The word tonight. Yes, sir. I was uh, contemplating on what I might say. The Lord dropped a scripture in my spirit. As I began to meditate on it more, it began to grow. And uh, I'm not trying to impress anyone tonight. Daddy heard me preach when he was living, and he thought I did pretty good. All right, Bishop. All right. 
my mama said I'm a bad man. So with those two things, I'm not really worried about none of y'all. But I'm going to try to do my best. I'm going to try to do my best. Second Timothy, fourth chapter. Verse 5 through 8. I've had some good days. All right, bitch. I've had some years to climb. I've had some weary days. Some lonely nights. But when I look around and I think things over, all of my good days, I'll play all of my bad days. I won't complain.
finished my course. That's right. I have finished my course. I want to use for a brief subject. Don't die before you finish your course. Don't fall short before you finish your course. Now, don't have the articulation of the phoenix. <laughs> Nor the wit of the smart ones. I'm just me. But uh, I thought about this, and I thought about my father, and I thought about the instructions that he would want to leave for everybody that's here. All right. Apostolically, he spoke into a lot of our lives. Yes, sir. I know he spoke into mine. Yes, sir. We heard that he has spoken into many of us. And the one thing that is very clear is that all of us have a course. Oh, man. That's right. That's right. Now, when I look at the word course, uh-huh. it really has several different meanings. Mm-hmm. Uh, it means that it can be uh, a, a race, yeah. or it can be a series of things that make up a whole. Yes, sir. Right. For instance, it could be a meal that had several different courses. Yes, sir. You have your appetizer, your main course, your dessert, which makes up one meal. Or it also could be used by, I happen to be a golfer, and a golf course is made up of 18 different holes. But within that one course, Uh you've got several different challenges. So now, Paul in his writings was very articulate and made very many references to uh, athletic events. Preferably racing. Uh In other words, He knew that the people that he was ministering to could relate to a race. But it wasn't just any race because he was, in dealing with the Romans and dealing with the Greeks, they were Olympians. Which means that there were several different events in their competition. And before one could be crowned, he had to excel in more than one thing. Uh-huh. So now, with this understanding, the Lord began to deal with me about us. Began to deal with me about you all. About us. First of all, in racing or running or competing, there has to be some conditioning involved. Yes, you don't just get out there and run and don't have no condition. You can't compete and I tried it. You can't do it. You can't just jump out there like you used to and say that you ready to run your race. And unfortunately, many of us have been trying to run our race without any preparation. That's why we have so many frustrated folks in the church. Because they're trying to compete on a level that they're not prepared for. They're trying to operate in a place that they have not been called to. They're trying to uh, act like they're something that they are not. 
He was incarcerated. Therefore, when he wrote this, he was trying to encourage somebody to go ahead and be all you can be, and he was locked up. Preach now. Now, come on. Kind of difficult. <laughs> when you're locked up yep. to encourage somebody. Yeah. Trust me, I know. <laughs> <laughs> right. Hold testify, brother. Yeah. Call time.
He was a bridge. Yes, that's good. The reason I can say that is because he humbled himself yes. and allowed young folks to cross over yes. on him. Yes. He said, you don't have the ability to get to the other side. Yes. But let me stretch myself out.
he looked up at me, and I saw him looking at me. <laughs> and my dad named me, but he never called my name right. <laughs> he named me Calvin. Yeah. Eugene. After his uncle, Eugene. Bird. But for the life of me, I don't think he's ever called me Calvin. He called me Cabin. <laughs> He, he looked at me from the other side of the room and said, Kevin. I said, yes, sir. He said, what, what, uh, what you got in that grip? I said, what? He said, what you got in that grip? I'm trying to figure out what a grip is. <laughs> oh, you mean my attaché thing? <laughs> <laughs> what you got in your grip? <laughs> Kevin, what you got in your grip? <laughs> he said, bring it here. <laughs> I said, man, daddy, ain't nothing in it. He said, Gavin, bring it here. My father was very particular about integrity. Yes. He was extremely careful about how you handled yourself. And if you've ever been around him as a preacher, how you handled the word. He wouldn't just let you get away with anything. Yes, you can preach a whole message and be wrong. But before he would dismiss, he would make sure he loved that everybody understood that he meant Daniel in the line. Let me close my message. The text says, Timothy, you've got a great responsibility. Yes, sir. You have the responsibility not to just know the way. But you're going to have to preach the word. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to have to be more than just knowledgeable about the word. But you're going to have to preach the word. In other words, you're going to have to proclaim the word. But in your proclaiming the word, you got to understand that there's some people who ain't going to want to hear your word. Yeah. All right. <laughs> you got to understand that there's some folks that are around you that are going to come up with their own word. Yeah. And their word is going to be what they try to operate on. Yeah. But Timothy, I want to encourage you. Yeah. I know I'm locked up right now. I know I'm incarcerated right now. I know it looks like my situation is really bad. But you got to understand that I've been living for this moment. Because the time of my departure is at hand. Can I preach my mouth? Go ahead, preach my uh, My time uh, is getting ready to be up. But your time is just now getting ready to stop. Yes. And I want to encourage you, son, that uh, you've got to run your race. And you've got to finish your course. Because your course is not my course. But he told the Romans, he said, he already called you. And he's already appointed you. Yeah.
my grandmother's funeral. Yes, when I preach my grandmother's funeral, I made an altar call. <laughs> at the funeral for <laughs> someone to be saved. One person stood up to be saved. Watch this now. That one person was my cousin. And he's standing right there. Right there. But watch this. Watch this. Put your hand out, dude. He stood up, gave his life to the Lord. Now, he's pastoring. He came off the streets, got saved, started working with another man. That man left the church. The bishops of the church came in, saw the work he was doing said, we want you to take the church. Amen. Not only you take the church, but take the houses that the church got. Amen. Take the building that the church got. Do your ministry that the church was supposed to be doing in the middle of the neighborhood. Now folks are getting saved because of his ministry. One person got saved. Now he's saving the whole neighborhood. Before I take my seat, I have to extend the invitation because everybody in here ain't ready to see Jesus. Everybody in here ain't ready to see the Lord. And I wouldn't want you to leave here without hearing somebody say, you need to give your life to the Lord. If you were here and you don't know the Lord, if you are here and you are not saved, I would that you would just slip your hand up and say, Preacher, I'm not ready to meet the Lord right now. Would you pray for me? If you are here, just slip your hand up. I'm not going to have you come down. Just slip your hand up and say, Thank you. I see you. Thank you. I see your hand. Thank you. Thank you. Hands are going up. I thank you. I don't have any gimmicks. I don't trick anybody into being saved because it's done by faith. It's not done by works. You can't earn your way into heaven. You can't do nothing to earn your salvation. The only thing you can do is just believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe that He died on the cross for your sins. Accept Him into your life. And I tell people all the time, I come down this a little bit, I tell people all the time, you can't ask for something that's already given to you. I learned this from the smart pastor over there. God has already forgiven you for your sins, past, present, and future. You just have to receive his forgiveness in your heart. That's right. Receive. 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 His forgiveness. You begin to every eye closed. Father, I thank you and I bless you. I give you praise, I give you honor, and I give you glory. I thank you for those hands that were lifted. I pray now, God, that you would give them an encounter today. I pray, God, that you would meet them right where they are. Help them to understand that there's more to it than the way they're living. Help them understand that you died on the cross for them. And that you rose again with all power in your hands. I thank you now. We bless you. We count it as done by faith. In Jesus' name we pray. I will be here. I will be here. Amen. Let me say this. If you raised your hand and you want to talk to somebody, I know this is my father's field, but I'll talk to you. These preachers pull them to the side. They'll talk to you. If you've got a problem that you need prayer for, I know we're at a funeral, but this is our business. This is what I do for a living. This is what we do. Preacher, if you're not too proud to talk to somebody about a problem, would you raise your hand? 
They all go to the building. They're not just up here. Thank you, Pastor. Who preaches? Y'all see all these people with their hands up? If you've got a problem and you need some prayer, find one of them brothers. And I promise you, they will talk with you. They will pray with you. They will confide in you. And pour into you. In Jesus' name. It is so.